All right. So we have exponential functions. What we talked about was f of x equals a to x, where a cannot be greater than 0 and a cannot equal 1. And we talked, and x is any real number. And then we also talked about another form of the value. We have f of x equals b plus or minus a to the x plus c. Now, when looking at transformations, so far you guys are very familiar with transformations of a quadratic. All right? That's something we've used to, used to teach in pre-calculus. We're not teaching it this year. So I'm going to go back and review our transformations. This is a function, exponential. Right? There's a couple characteristics that we're going to know about the graph, which I'll talk about later. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at just functions in general. Um, so any function. I don't care if it's a quadratic function. Let me go and see how this looks. Let's create my table here. So if I have f of x, okay. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me actually write this in there. So if we're talking about the transformations of a function, so I'll talk about transformation. All right, um, we'll do the form. And then we'll do an example. All right, so the first one is I'll just call it actually a parent graph. So that actually that means there's no transformation. Oh, example uh, transformation, yeah, OK. Then we'll do a horizontal shift, vertical shift. We'll go to the left. All right, let's do horizontal shift to the right. Let's do vertical shift up, vertical shift down, and let's do a reflection. I got one more. About the x-axis, and then there's one more reflection about the y-axis. Wow, that looks really bad. But it's OK. So you have a parent. Wow, that's like horrible writing. Um, anyways, so you have parent graph, horizontal shift, left, horizontal shift to the right, vertical shift up, vertical shift down, reflection x-axis, reflection y-axis. All right. So if I was just going to ask you what the parent graph is, it would just be f of x. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and look at what would be an example. And then actually, I'm going to do two examples. For what you guys know so far, what about f of x equals x squared? That's what we call the parent graph, right? Yes? There you go. There's the parent graph. Let's go actually in with one, though, that's going to be, let's do in another example. Let's do two examples. I'll do one with quadratic, so you guys remember. And then I'll do another one with exponential. So that's an example of a quadratic as a parent graph. But an example of an exponential would be f of x equals 2 to the x. All right. So x is going to be your variable, and our a is going to be what we call our base. All right. So we'll talk more again about the graphs and so forth. But right now, I just want you guys to remember the shifts. So what about if we had a horizontal shift? Right? When we were horizontally shifting, remember that was going left or right. Um, so what we do with that is, if I was going to do a horizontal shift to the left, I'm going to add a number inside of my function. So uh, instead of just having f of x, f of x is the parent graph. But if I do f of x plus c, that means I add a value inside the function. That's going to be shifting my graph to the left. So an example here would be f of x equals x plus 2 squared. That's for a quadratic. And for a logarithmic, it'd be f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1. Right? So that's going to shift your graph to the left. Because remember, here are my parentheses. It's x 2 raised to the x plus 1. 
So you could probably put parentheses around there. So remember, if you're adding going to the left, that means to go to the right, you have to subtract. subtract. Very good. So that's going to be f of x minus c. So an example of a quadratic would be x minus 2 squared. These are all your parent families of graphs. And these are going to be the exact same when we deal with logarithms and when we do with uh, trigonometric functions as well. All right, let's go with the vertical shift. So if we're going to do a vertical shift up, now what we're doing is we're not adding our value c inside the function. It's now outside of the function. Do you guys see the difference? And you'll be able to see this right here. Let's say I do f of x equals x squared plus 3. Right? So now you have your function f of x, which is x squared. And now you're just adding 3 outside of the function. That's going to shift your graph up. All right? Notice the difference of when it's inside the function and when it's outside of the function. So to go down, I'm going to subtract. So I'm just doing quadratics. The only reason why I'm going over this with quadratics is just to kind of remind you guys of what you were taught last year and just to be like, oh, yeah, OK, I kind of remember that stuff. Um, now let's go and talk about reflections. Reflections over the x-axis is when we had negative f of x. And you guys should be familiar with this. You guys should be familiar with that with the leading coefficient test, right? Now we have our x is that it's negative. Right, Our a, our leading coefficient a is negative, so now our graph is being reflected. So the graph opens down, which means it's reflected over the x-axis. Now, I know some of you might say, well, in your definition, you say a cannot equal 0. But notice that that's not a negative 2. That's a positive 2. That positive 2 is being, being raised to an x, and then 2 raised to the x is being multiplied by negative 1. So that is not a negative 2. That is a positive 2 being raised to a power. Right? Order of operations, you apply powers befo before you apply multiplication. So that is a 2 that is raised to a power, a positive 2 being raised to a power of x, being multiplied by negative 1, and then subtract 3. Now the last one, you guys are probably not as familiar with this, because with quadratics, being reflected over the y-axis really didn't mean too much. Because when we look at the graph of a quadratic, especially the paragraph, if I say reflect this over the x-axis, you're like, OK, that makes sense, right? Done. But if I say reflect it over the y-axis, that means you take it over the y-axis and you reflect it. So what do you have? You have the exact same graph again, right? So having a y-axis reflection when we dealt with quadratics really didn't mean too much to us because it wasn't really changing anything. However, for exponential, which we'll talk about, um, that is going to affect us. And that's going to be actually part of our, uh, our decay problems. So if I had 2 raised to a negative x, and we'll talk about that. OK. All right, cool. So that is your family of our functions and transformations. One with quadratics, one with not. So now you're like, OK.